Good morning, students, and welcome to our YouTube channel, Nan Mandiri Modern School. So, in the previous video, we are just going through the chapter number two, that is components of the food. In previous video, we have seen about the minerals and the dietary fibers. Okay. So here, in minerals, we have seen the minerals like iron, zinc, copper, and iodine, and uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and this all the things and dietary fibers we know these are the fibers which the fibers which are there in the food food that are known as the dietary fibers okay so then so here let us revise first of all that is minerals helps in the pro minerals helps in the proper function of the various parts of the body minerals are needed for many important body functions as such as the formation of the bones, teeth and blood cells as well as maintaining a normal heartbeat. Some minerals are needed in small amounts such as iron, zinc, copper and iodine. Minerals such as calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium are needed by our bodies in large amounts. So, figure 2.5 shows the rich sources of minerals that are made spinach, broccoli, carrot, fish, cheese, iodized salt, lemon and oranges. These are the rich sources of minerals. Okay. Now moving towards the dietary fiber. <coughs> so dietary fibers that are the fibers present in the food that are known as the dietary fibers. Okay. So here have you noticed that when you eat an orange Apart from the juice, you also consume the fibers of the fruits. How this is this fiber helps us? So is, this, is fiber present in our food or not? So here the fiber present in our food is called the dietary fibers. It is very important part of our diet. Dietary fibers adds bulk to our food and thus helps it to push solid waste through the intestines so that they can be easily pass out of our body. So here, what does the dietary fiber do? So the dietary fibers helps the intestines to move the solid waste out of the body. Okay students, and here moving further, that is, we get more fibers mostly from plant fruit, plant food, food, that is fruits, vegetables and whole grains are examples of food rich in fiber. Lack of fiber in the diet causes the stool to become hard and difficult to pass leading to a condition called the constipation. Therefore, we must ensure that our diet is rich in dietary fiber. Okay, so here first of all, what? So our food must contain this, some of the things like carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals uh, and this all the things the food should contain. But all the things we are required in the minimum amount. Okay, we should require this all the things in the minimum amount. So our body can function easily, okay, and we just have a healthy body, okay. Here now moving towards the water, which is our new topic. So water. Water. That is here. Our body is mostly made up of water. Almost seventy percent of our body weight is water. Here. We can say the first point that is almost almost seventy percent almost seventy percent of our body our body weight is water weight is water okay so here almost 70 percent of our body weight is water okay students and here the next point that is water is needed by the body or the following here why the body is needed in our uh, water is needed in our body so the first to transport various substance within the body so the first point that is for the water that is to transport to transport transport 
for various substance various substance various substance within within the body okay here the first thing that why water is needed in our body so the first point that is to transport various substance within the body so from what we eat it is transported by the water the most of the things is transferred by the water so it is said that to transport various substance within the body water is needed second point that is to have to have the body absorb absorb nutrients nutrients from food food here what happens to help the body absorb nutrients from the food so water also absorbs the nutrients from the food that we eat okay students how it absorbs so what happens the when we eat the food it just mixes with the water okay and so what happens it will dissolve in the water and water will absorb this or all the things the nutrients from the food and the wastage will go out of the body okay now third one to control the body temperature to control control the body temperature body temperature to control the body temperature here the body temperature should be maintained okay students so why it should be maintained because if the body temperature will not be maintained then it can just harm to our body so for that to just maintain the body temperature what is to control the body temperature the water is used okay then after the next one to allow to allow various various chemical reaction chemical reaction to take to take place inside our body inside our body during during digestions respiration excretion so here the next for what the water is used so here it is to allow the various chemical reactions to take place inside our body during digestion respiration excretion etc so here for this all things the water is used moving further so here before that we just revise this so what what things with what the 
water is used in our body so first of all they have given a point that is almost 70% of our, of our body weight is water means what happens if it is the uh, if your weight is 100 kg so from that 70% means 70 kg is of water and 30% is of your own body it is said that it is 70% of body weight is water then after next point that we have seen to transport various substance within the body so from the things that we eat so the nutrients and this all the thing to transfer to other uh, different parts of the body the water is used thirdly to help the body absorb nutrients from the food so the food's nutrition is absorbed by the water and then after just transport to all the parts of the body next one that is to control the body temperature so here to control the body temperature also the water is used then after the last point that is to allow various chemical reactions to take place inside our body during digestion respiration and excretion the water is used okay students so here this is all about the water and here the other thing is also given let us see that before that if you want to write this just write down Okay students, moving further, that is here, we lost a water, lot of water as sweat and urine. Our next point that is, we just lost our water in the uh, urine and as a sweat from our body. So, we need to drink enough water, otherwise it can lead to a condition called the dehydration. So, if you just don't drink the minimum amount of the water, then your body is dehydrated. Okay, so yes, your body is dehydrated. So, what happens due to dehydration? You can't just, your body will not function properly. Then after here, we also get water from milk, fruits, vegetables and juices. Oh, however, we should try and drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of water every day to keep us Hydrated. So, what is hydrated and what is dehydrated? So, what happens? Our body just secretes the water in the form of what? Urine and in the form of sweat. So, what happens? The water is gone out of our body. So, we should drink the minimum amount of the water which is required for our body. So, if you just don't drink the enough amount of the water, then your body will be dehydrated. And if you will just drink the enough amount of the water, Okay, then your body will stay hydrated. Okay, so this is all about the uh, dehydration and the hydration. Okay, now moving towards the new point. Here it is let's answer. So what will I do? You just first do that by your own and in the next video I will give the answers of it. Okay, so here now moving towards the next point. That is balance diet. Balance diet. Inhale this all the things in the minimum amount, 
then this is a balanced diet. Means we should we require enough amount of the proteins, vitamins, minerals, and all the things. So if we just eat daily as a part of the diet, okay, then it is known as the balanced diet. So here it is written. We must include the right amount of each nutrients in our daily diet. Our body can function properly only if our diet contains the correct proportions of all the nutrients. So here, first of all, the definition of balanced diet it is given. So let us see that. So a diet. A diet that contain that contain a diet that contains the right amount of the right amount of amount of the different components different components components of food of food required required for healthy functioning healthy functioning healthy functioning of our body of our body is called a balanced diet balanced diet okay students so here what is balanced diet so a balanced diet means the body needed the all the proportions of the nutrients that is what all the components that is proteins vitamins fats carbohydrate vitamins minerals all the things which is required in our body if we eat the enough amount of that then that is known as a balanced diet that is a diet that contains the right amounts of all the different components of the food required for healthy functioning of our body is called a balanced diet Okay, so that is known as a balanced diet. So here, moving further, different stuffs are rich in the different components. Therefore, we must include a variety of food stuffs in our diet. Figure two point seven shows the right proportion in which each component should be included in the diet. Okay, here it is given sweets and fats means we. Should eat some amount of the sweets so that and fats in our body. Secondly, fish and meat. So if you are vegetarian, so you don't need to eat that. Then after milk and milk products should be there in your diet. Okay. Then after fruits and vegetables. Yes, vegetables from we just make the sabji and that all. Then after cereals, that is some breads, carbohydrate means and the. Enough amount of the water as grown. How many glass of water? Two plus two, four plus two, six plus two, eight plus ten, eleven. Means ten to twelve glasses of water is required in our daily life. Okay. So this R is a balanced diet. Okay. So again, repeating this, that we should eat the proper amount of all the components of the food, which contains all the vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates. Fats and that all the things 
and also enough amount of the fruits vegetables water and milk and milk products so that we can, our body can function properly okay moving forward to the deficiency of this is this but before that so now moving towards to the deficiency this is this okay let us see that okay so here deficiency this is this let us discuss about that deficiency deficiency this is this deficiency this is so here the diseases which is caused by due to what due to the lack of proteins vitamins carbohydrates or any other components of the food so that is known as the deficiency this is this means again i am just repeating that the diseases which is due to the lack of food components that are minerals vitamins carbohydrate fats and that all due to that the uh, the disease which is caused that is known as the deficiency this is so here the lack of nutrition in our diet over a long period of time can cause disease so here first of all the defic def uh, definition is given that is this is this is that are caused that are caused due to due to the lack of lack of nutrients such as carbohydrates carbohydrates proteins vitamins or minerals minerals in the diet in the diet are called deficiency diseases deficiency diseases okay they are known as the deficiency this is here to this what is deficiency this is so here it, they have given this definition that is this is that are caused due to the lack of nutrients such as carbohydrates proteins vitamins or minerals in the diet are called deficiency this is so we just do not inhale the enough amount of what carbohydrates protein vitamins or minerals in our body so the diseases are caused they are known as the deficiency diseases okay it is further categorized then okay so here now moving forward that is this diseases can be prevented by eating a diet rich in all nutrients so if we just want to cover this diseases then our diet should contains all the nutrients which is required for our body then after as we have learned we get most of our energy from 
carbohydrates therefore a lack of carbohydrates leads to a lack of energy and stamina so here they have given given an example that the energy is get by the carbohydrate so if we just don't eat the carbohydrate food then what will happen it will happen what we can't have enough energy and stamina to our body then after it is people who do not do a lot of physical work such as farmers and laborers need more carbohydrates in their diet than people who do less physical work such as sitting in offices for long hours so here they have just given a category that what is that so the physical work is more they require more carbohydrates and the physical work is less they require the less carbohydrates okay now here moving forward that is here it is deficiency of carbohydrates and proteins our next topic that is deficiency of carbohydrates and protein here in this video we will just see the introduction and in deep we will just move in the next video so in deficiency of carbohydrates and protein so what happens so if we just don't eat the minimum amount of the carbohydrates and protein so it cause this is in your body so here carbohydrates here we have just seen that carbohydrates gives us energy so first of all what they have said they the body don't have enough stamina and energy if we just don't eat the carbohydrate okay and proteins here that also we have seen in the proteins that proteins just grow our muscle muscles organs and even make the blood okay so that will not form if we just don't eat the enough amount of the protein so our muscle will not grow our some of the organs will not just work properly and our blood will have not grow as much as required okay so this is all about the deficiency of carbohydrates and proteins further we will see in the next video now please write down your homework so in your homework first you just write down that is the points that were what is needed by our body for the following water is needed by our body secondly you just write down the let's answer let's answer and the answers you just first find out by your own and in next video i will give all the answers okay students and then after the balance diet definition what is balance diet balance diet okay then after uh deficiency diseases no you just don't write down that you just write down this all the things and we will meet in the next video so this is your homework okay students bye